related to costs, and one of those pieces is the lunch program. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, if you take a look at the second purple row here. A couple years ago, uh, we transferred $17,000 from the general fund on the fund 50 so we would break even. Last year is thirteen three. This year, uh, we anticipate it being zero. That might be an idealistic point, but the point is, is then the following year, even if we balance this year, um, we're still having to do a transfer the year after. And as that goes out over time, you're noticing that. As a result of that, um, as well as conversations that we've had at committee level over the last couple of years, we've asked Taher to look in to see what we can do so that we can start breaking even. Because if you know, we've increased costs to the, the, the kids. Mm -hmm. The counts are dropping, though, as far as the, um, the census counts of eating People lunch and so on. Um, granted, sometimes it's menu choices. So the cost increase, so that was based on uh, driven from the federal government? Partially. Right? Yep. And then they forced you to raise it up in certain. Now, we didn't have to raise it all the way, we only raised it partly, but we were forced to raise it the way at a certain period of time. Correct. Okay. What I would say to that, and with, with exactly what you had just said, it's been recommended to us that we increase you know, no more than a dime or 15 cents consecutively now in, into the future. Mm -hmm. The point is, though, is even if we do that, chances are we still not, may not break even. Okay? All right. Aside from the cost standpoint, though, with, the, with the lunch program, and that's where the, the letter from Taher came in, um, we sat down with Taher and said, look, we're concerned that we're not breaking even. We're concerned that, you know, what, what's going on as far as participation and so on and so forth. And, the, and this is just a quarterly meeting. Tying in with the standpoint that um, we're up for the bidding process this year if we choose to stay in the federally subsidized lunch program. Okay? So the conversation with Tucker um, basically was, uh, would you please take a, a very deep look at if we were to deviate away from or steer away from that federally subsidized lunch program, what would the impact be? So they're studying that, and that, this letter, basically, that was sent to you um, talks about the struggles that they're having with the federally subsidized lunch program as far as the parameters, um, coming up with uh, highly, interested, highly interesting menu items that kids are going to eat, uh, staying within the, the, the parameters of um, daily allowances in the recipes and so on and so forth. So right now what they are doing is they are looking at actually what would the cost difference be for us to go a la carte. And what I mean by that is, is that we would not have a government subsidized lunch program, okay? So then we would not have to follow the parameters, the strict parameters that the USDA has in place for a hot lunch program. The trick is, is right now that's probably about, uh, I'd say around 50, maybe $60,000 of reimbursement that we get. Um, for free and reduced. And is that about 15% of the student budget? I think it was like 22? It no, depends what building you're at, to be honest with you, Dan. It, it, it's probably around 19 right now. Okay. Yeah. Um, higher at some buildings than, than others. But what I'm getting at is the question we would need to answer as a group then is what are we going to do for those kids that are receiving free and reduced lunch if we go away from the subsidy part? Okay. That, that's the biggest question we're going we're to need to answer. The other part is, is understand if we were to go to an a la carte type of a situation that is away from the current um, USDA program, um, we would probably have to increase prices. Um, but kids would have more choices though too. So Taher is doing a study on that. They hope to have more information to me before the end of the month. And I'll be forwarding that to you. And essentially, we're going to have to decide soon if that's the route we want to go next year, or if we're going to stick and stay in the federally subsidized lunch program, we're going to need to go out for bids because that's 
this uh, DPI expectation that every every couple of years you do. Yeah, that. but this is all for bids of the person managing our lunch program. Yep. Correct. Yep. We go outside of that. We still have them managing our lunch program. Right. Not within their parameters. Just give you a little history on this. I brought this up two years ago when we it was two years ago. I think so. It was in the summer about two years ago. years ago. And at that time, I questioned, do we stay in the hot lunch program? The problem is when the federal government dictates to you that half the amount of calories from last year are now this year's maximum, and every student, no matter if they're in kindergarten or eighth grade, receives the main same amount of food. And by the way, now where you used to have maybe <coughs> baked chicken and roll and vegetables, now you have hummus and chips. And the kids are looking at it going, well, I don't even know what this is. They take fruit, they throw it away. This happens significantly at every school. And the question comes down to at what point do you say we take the boot off our neck and we just tell the federal government to stay out of our school? And that was the discussion at least a couple of years ago. So we're back to it now, and it's only going to get worse because they're getting tighter and tighter. Right. And they shared that with us with us and they met with us a couple weeks ago. Yep. The next year the stipulation is going to be even tighter um, because um, if you have a, a, a federally subsidized program, even the a la, carte ex, a la carte choices are becoming tighter next year. So buildings that offer a la carte, not just you know your hot lunch tray, but actually give kids more choices, are going to have well, more stipulations. Any, so, anything you do in your school now is a regular thing. Just because you took a little bit of money for students receiving a free hot lunch, now all of a sudden they can dictate to you what kind of drinks are in your school, no more sugary this and that, get rid of your soda machines, you can't have uh, um, pizza that's over a certain fat content. So even the kids not buying the hot lunch are now forced by the federal government to follow the federal government's guidelines. Right. Not High school just went to that a couple of years ago, didn't they? they high school it? was completely all on their own. They decided to go into it. I'm sure there'll be some revision to get back on it, yeah. as with most school districts. So. That's just one example of something that we have to keep on our radar. But that's a short-term radar case because, again, we have to go, we're obligated to go out for bids if we choose to stay in the federally funded or federally subsidized program. Um, uh, that has to happen in this way. Okay. So